They said, I'm going to set you up with uh, this other surgeon. And this, this uh, chest surgeon, I knew him very well. Worked with him, you know, talked a lot. And to make this shorter a little bit, I ended up having three surgeries, three major surgeries. They had to pull my lungs out and then cut away, cut the cancer out. I have two very long scars on both sides of my chest. Now, <clears throat> they don't tell you this. <laughs> and I'm gonna give you a little, you know, if this is too graphic, uh, please fast forward about 10 seconds. But when your lungs, when they pull your lungs out, your lungs are inflated inside of your body. When they pull them outside of you, they're deflated. They look like, um, Almost like a Ziploc bag with nothing in it after it's wet, you know, just kind of blah. So, just like a Ziploc bag, when those lungs, when they put the lungs back in you, after they've repaired them, they have to be refilled up all the time. So, whenever I, after I had my surgery, when I would fall asleep, my lung would collapse. So I had to, they, they show you how to train yourself so that doesn't happen. You have to keep coughing. You got to keep coughing. <sighs> got to always cough so you can keep filling up your lung. Well, that cough, let me tell you, that cough is the worst pain I've ever felt. It's like my lungs, are, you could you could hear it, like just like Velcro being ripped because you got to <gasps> breathe in and tear that lung, that Pull it out so it can actually breathe. It hurts so bad. It hurts so bad. We had to buy special things for the refrigerator because I was so cocky and proud. Things so I could get water, little spigot things in the refrigerator, water and milk to help me keep some of my autonomy. But one day, one day I couldn't, I had to go to the bathroom. And I, you know, I tell people this all the time. Who's gonna be there to wipe your butt, right? Who are those people, those butt wipers in your, in your life? And my ex had to be a butt wiper. She had to pull me off of the toilet. Cause I couldn't get up. I was asleep on one side of the bed and and wake up in water like sweat pain <laughs> I hated it I hated the fact of knowing somebody had to help me but it all started rapping you know as I got old and, and, and survived just beat it endured it man. learn that people are here to help us and the biggest thing I learned that we're here to help other people because I was proud man and God took that away I gotta take your pride in order to give you give you maturity I gotta I have to I have to remove your pride in order to give you character I have to take your autonomy and, and your 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 feeling of superiority. I have to take that in order for you to help people. I didn't know. And I walked around pissed. Angry. How dare this happen?
And I'll tell you what happened with my third surgery. The surgery that actually saved my life. I go in, they do the surgery, but they put the epidural for my chest, they put it low. They put it in my, ab for my lower abdomen and back, and that's not where we had surgery. And because of the medicine, it caused me to be constipated, real pressure in your stomach. So I have collapsed lungs, pressure in my stomach, chest tube sticking out everywhere. Um, and there was a hole in my bed. And I kept telling the nurses, there's a hole in my bed. And they were like, nah, you're just on the drugs. And it's like, no, I'm, I'm cognizant. There's a hole in my bed because it's bending my chest tubes. I'm in pain. I was like, well, just hit your pain button. I was like, I'm hitting the pain button, but it's causing more pain. My stomach, I'm cramping. I, I'm hurting so bad. <laughs> and I realized, like, all the attitude I gave to people in that hospital, oh, they, they, they can give it back when you're laying on your back. So, people, be aware how you treat people on this part of your journey, because the next part of your journey, you may need people. All right. So these these women, they don't give a crap. They tired. They were tired of my crap. Like, I don't care, man. Well, since my epidural wasn't up around in my back, so I could get have the pain and and um, be away from that pain, I was in so much pain that I went into a shock. I started actually dying. <laughs> and I remember being on that bed and, and I had just gotten so angry because nobody was paying attention to me because nobody was paying attention to me I thought no I was by myself I had to reach a point of being alone I didn't know that point was going to be a, be damn near near death right so I get to that point of being alone and what happens is, <laughs> no lie, I start going in shock or something. My body's flipping out. I hear all these buzzers going off, but I'm, I'm looking, I'm able to see what's going on. I'm looking at, laying down, looking up, they're like, we got a crash cart. We got to get this crash cart. Blah. I see all these people running in alarms. And, and I'm just, I couldn't say anything. I'm just sitting there like, I don't even know if I wanted to say anything. It was just like, but in the inside, in my mind, I remember saying this to myself. I was like, I'm ready to die. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to. I don't want to be the broken down version of me. I don't want people to see my weakness. I don't want to lose and, and die like the people I've seen. I want it better for me. I wanted the, the way out. I wanted to choose death right now. And I remember the lady just over me and they're yelling my name. Calvary. Are you with us? Are you with us? And and I'm like, I'm looking. It's like all this stuff was happening in slow motion. I'm looking at you guys go crazy, but I just can't talk. <laughs> and something happened, man. 